What you're seeking is a blessing from God. You must expect a miracle. You have the power of choice. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to Life Today. I'm Randy Robinson. Good to have you guys here on the program. You're going to enjoy this. Uh, and if you, you know, if you've been around for more than, uh, you know, five years, then you will remember today's guest when she was on The View and Good Morning America. Uh, kind of just, you know, at the peak. I mean, this is like people work their entire lives in media to get to the position that Paula Ferris was in. And then, boom walked walked out and walked towards god and uh and that's a good thing when god calls you to do that you got to do that and and boy i just well i'm gonna find out from her because i can't imagine that i can imagine that that was not always easy but paula it's great to have you on life today live to see what's going on with you i will mention your book here in a second but welcome awesome thank you randy it's a pleasure to be with y'all today all right so uh a little bit of the impetus for this is this book called out uh, which is a great title because that's what happened. Uh, and the reissue, the paperback, and the bonus materials and things like that. We'll cover some of that. But great. for those of you who don't know, for those people who don't know your story, um, mm -hmm. why did why did you just why did you leave? I mean, that was the height. Yes. Well, it was the height of my career. So, you know, to let me just tell people where we are now. We're in South Carolina. We moved to a small rural town. In South Carolina, about 3,000 is a population here, and we moved here during the pandemic. And, uh, but, you know, rewind the tape a couple of years ago, 2018 at the height, I just, you know, I was, I was anchoring Good Morning America. I was co-hosting The View at the height of my career. But what good is it for a man to gain the world and lose his soul? That's how I felt. I'm not saying that you can't be successful and right. balance it. There are plenty of people that do that, Randy. But for me, I looked around and I was at the peak and I was burned out. And I really felt God telling me to slow down. Mm -hmm. I resisted for a while. Um, but just looking around at the landscape, I uh, my values were clashing with my choices professionally and personally. So my health was suffering. Um, the things that I professed to be valuable to me and part of my core values, I wasn't adhering to those. I knew God wanted me to slow down. And so I eventually did after he allowed a, a series of events to happen in my life to force me to pump the brakes. I slowed down. And that's where I wrote much of the book called out is he called me out of that space and then I had to figure out who I was outside of it. And so often we attach our identity and purpose to something that shifts. And I think a lot of us found out maybe we had misplaced significance in something during the pandemic. Sure. Um, so finding out who you are outside of what you do, who you are outside of, you know, I have money in my bank account. Who are you outside of all those Instagram followers? Who are you outside of relationship? What are the parts of you that won't shift and shake? And then, um, during the pandemic, as the book was released, we decided to come down to South Carolina for a couple of weeks because my sister lives here. This is back in March. And we just really felt God saying stay. And Randy, we were like, wait, what? Why? Um, but we just felt God saying stay. We had a peace in our spirit, even though it didn't really make a ton of sense why we should stay down here. Again, I have a sister down here, but... Mm -hmm. Um, we didn't have jobs down here. Um, we had, my husband's in real estate, so we had purchased an investment property and we started, that's why we came down and we decided to just stay and God's opened up some really incredible doors, but it was really scary just hearing that or feeling that still small voice, feeling that peace in your spirit where God says stay and you're just really scared. You're scared mm -hmm. to, but we felt that we had to just step out press into our fear, step out in faith and stay. And God's really just, he showed up. It's been pretty incredible. Uh, how, how are you liking the elbow room and clean air? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's great, actually. You know, I know, I mean, New York was a great chapter. It was a really great chapter, um, it, but it's frenzied and frenetic. And for us, it was a chapter. It, it wasn't ever, it didn't ever feel like home. It was home for now. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I'm so grateful for that and grateful for this literal 180 in our lives. It's so different down here, um, <laughs> but we're embracing it. We really are. You know, the kids, the kids are enjoying school. It was a tough time for my oldest, at least to, to make this, huge monumental shift she's in middle school mm -hmm. so can you imagine starting middle school 
seventh grade in COVID, brand new, not just middle school, but, you know, compound that with a pandemic, you can't see anybody's faces Hmm. and everybody's new, it's new curriculum. So there's definitely some adjustment. And it's not when, when God calls you to do something, sometimes it doesn't make sense and it can be scary and there are sacrifices involved, but, um, you know, we just look at how God's taking care of us and it's not necessarily what we wanted, but it was definitely what we needed. And, um, it's just been a really sweet, special time for our family to be down here. Oh, good. Well, as, as I said to you before, before we started, I, I could totally live in a small town in South Carolina. New York City is a tough, tough yeah. place. I mean, there's a lot of great, I get it, and I yeah. have fun when I go, but oh my gosh, I kind of can't wait to go to get out. Because anyway. Yeah, my, my motto was, I like to visit, I love to leave. That was my motto about New York. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I get it. And I don't, I don't want to, I don't, I, I have friends that live there and, and God bless them. And that's just a personal thing, but you know, um, here, here's a, a couple of questions that I want to ask you because I think people will learn from them. Uh, and, and we'll start with the tough and then we'll go to the fun. Uh, but when, when, how long before you left you ABC, did you feel like you were supposed to leave ABC? Because I have a question about that, but I'm curious how long of kind of a frame that work that was. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I I say sometimes change is our choice and sometimes it's not. So Randy, in 2018, that's when I pumped the brakes and I stepped away from anchoring Good Morning America weekends and The View. And I stepped into a much less prestigious role where I was just a general correspondent, but I needed to get my life back. I was burned out. And then last year during the pandemic, that leaving ABC wasn't totally my choice. So again, sometimes God allows pain um on your journey and he allows change that's not your choice yeah but it has been honestly it wasn't what we wanted but it's been exactly what we needed and so again you know for us it was just an example of you know god, god's got it god's going to orchestrate it but when god puts something on your heart to really just obey and trust and step out in faith and so- press into your fear you, you, my question is is about the resistance because you, you you I thought if I read you right you, you resisted some things at first. I did. I did in 2018 when I felt God telling me to slow down and pump the brakes. I was like, no, I didn't want to. Right. Because um, I was at the height of my career, Randy, sure. and you know, people kill to be yeah, right, to, to right, work at the network. Right. And right. it wasn't until it wasn't until um, you know God allowed a series of you know, health scares and tragedies in a short period of time where, you know, I was like, I can't step away. God, you called me to do this. Surely you wouldn't call me out of it. Um, Even though my health was suffering, even though my values weren't lining up with my choices, all of that, um, I just, God had to allow some tragedies to slow me down. And And it was, it was in the tragedies of, I had a miscarriage, I had a concussion, I got in a car crash, I, I had influenza, I had pneumonia in seven months. And it was like, okay, God, if I wasn't going to slow down, he was going to slow me down. And that's what he did. Yeah. And, and that's where my question was going, because a lot of people, sometimes they, they, they resist, (laughs) you know, or they doubt what they think they've heard from God. Understandably, I get that. Um, or they think maybe it's it's not God, but he allowed the he allowed some some tough times to really get totally. your attention. So, Absolutely. Yeah. So here's my question on the follow up. Once you said, "Okay, God, that surrender, not my will, but yours," uh, what did you get on the other side of it? Well, at first, I was angry. To be honest, <laughs> I was like, "Surely you didn't." lead me to this point just to yank me out of it, right? You called me to do this. I was angry. I was frustrated, but I was burnt out. It was a cavalcade of emotions. And then when I finally stepped away, Randy, I was humbled and in some ways devastated because the person I had become is not the person I had professed to be. Um, And I didn't know who I was outside of it. So it set me on a journey to find out who I was yeah. outside of what I did yeah, and who I was outside of this thing that I put way too much significance in. Cause I think, you know, your value isn't just in your vocation, even though that's what society and media will tell you what's your name and what do you do for a living? Sure. Right. So it set me on a journey of self-discovery, a lot of tears, a lot of shaking my fist at God. Um, 
but in the end, you know, I, I, I really am just so passionate about this message that God cares more about who we're called to be, not so much what we're called to do. Yeah. And he will call us to do many things in our life. We don't have to do one thing forever. Our vocational calling will mm. and can change throughout our lives. We have to give ourselves the permission to branch out and to try new things. Um, and sometimes when God calls you, you feel ill-equipped and unready and unqualified. Um, and you just have to step out in faith. And, um, I, you know, I'm a, I'm just a big believer in branching out and trying new things when God puts it on your heart. Mm, that's good. So, you know, on the view, Joy Behar called you some really un, unkind things. Uh, and then the, you know, it was all in fun, the, though. It's all in fun. Okay. And then, yeah, but we <laughs> now, you know, you've been called different things. I've been called a lot of things, right? I've been called a lot of things. (laughs) I have. Well, I was trying to transition to the the job (laughs) descriptions here, okay? Because what I'm getting to is this is this question of who does God call Paula Ferris today? Yeah, I think it's a you know it is a matter of shifting my paradigm. Instead of saying I'm Paula and I I worked at GMA or I anchor GMA, I co-hosted The View, like that all changes, right? So I I had misplaced the identity. I had to find out who I was, who God created me to be, the parts of me that won't shift and shake, my talents and gifts. And um, I say, I'm Paula, I'm a wife, I'm a mom, I love Jesus, I'm curious, I ask questions and I like to champion and challenge people. And that's who I think truly God created me to be. And embracing that, it's not, I'm not embracing a job. I'm not embracing a particular vocation. I'm creating, I'm embracing who, who I believe God uniquely created me to be. Um, somebody who's curious, who likes to ask questions, who likes to champion and challenge people, who loves um, her, her relationship with Jesus. She's a wife and a mom. And, and everywhere I go, no matter if it's this podcast that I launched or if I write another book, who knows, um, I'm launching a company, which I'm not a business person. I'm not an entrepreneur, but I'm taking curiosity and question asking and championing people and challenging people, taking it to that space because the doing is always going to change, but who I am created to be, um, that's never going to change. And, you know, God, God just asks, asks of us, Jesus didn't conflate it. You know, he said, I have come to fulfill my purpose to offer myself as a living sacrifice. He didn't say, I came here to be the best carpenter I can be, yo. You know, I have come to, so we need to offer ourselves as a living sacrifice and, and figure out who we are outside of the doing. And, okay, and I'm going to press you even further because you can take this. This is nothing compared to what you've been through. Oh, come on. I mean, these are, this is like, come on. <laughs> this is elementary, Randy. Let's go. Bring All right. it. Okay, but if if your husband divorced you, uh, if right. your children will be nice and grew up and, and, and left and as we intend them to do, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, if the business failed, uh, then who is Paula Ferris? Well, my identity is not in those things. Um, if my husband divorced me, um, that's his right. You know, if my, something happened to my children, I'm still a mother, still going to love Jesus. If the business fails, oh well. My identity is not in that. My value is at vocation and my worth is at work. And I don't think my calling is just my career. God will continue to ask me to be a curious question asking person who loves to champion and challenge people. <laughs> and I'll continue, I'll continue to do that. Yeah, maybe a title shift, maybe a title changes if my husband divorced. Man, what did you have to go there, Randy? Did I wasn't you have suggesting to go anything. There? I wasn't suggesting anything. I was just <laughs> then I will just remove that from the title. But like that's who I really feel like I'm created to be. And I, that's not, you know, I, I don't plan on my husband and I've been through a lot and you know, I write about, I intimate some of it. We almost got divorced oh, um, early okay. on in our marriage. Oh. Um, I moved out and we were separated, but by the grace of God, we, we worked it out, but it's, you know, marriage is hard. Marriage is really difficult. It's ups and downs. Um, and it's a commitment. It's not a yes. feeling an emotion. Yes. So it's a choice. It's a choice yes. on a daily basis to, to, you know, pick up your cross and put somebody else, somebody else's needs ahead of your own. Are you familiar with the Enneagram? Yeah, I'm an eight. You're an eight? What is your dog? Oh, on hold on. Chair? There's my dog. What, I am. What's, what's what the I, what, Hey, Addie. This is amazing, isn't it? That's Real my dog's people, name, yeah. Addie. Um, an eight is the challenger. It is the challenger. Okay. Yeah, well, somebody who like, who gravitates towards conflict but I'm an eight wing nine. So I'm a challenger. Um, but I also am a peacemaker, which kind of sounds 
contradictory, but I like to check. And I think it's one of the reasons why I did enjoy a setup of the view. You, you come to the table, you, you challenge people with ideas, but at the end of the day, it's not like you're trying to reach one conclusion. You're just trying to get people there and get them to realize we can agree to disagree. We can still respect one another. <laughs> I, 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 and, and I don't have to just see you as your policy. I can see you as somebody who's fearfully and wonderfully made. God loves you just as much as he loves me. Yeah. So, but the eight, I'm like, if you want something done, Randy, you come to me. A conflict feels like my daughter all the time is like, stop trying to pick a fight with dad. I'm like, I'm not in conflict for the Enneagram eight. It feels like intimacy. Yeah, It does. And like, I don't let things go or like fester. I deal with it right away. And then I move on. I don't have time to worry about it anymore. I'm not going to hold anything over your head, but if you want something done, I'll have it done five minutes ago. Okay. All right. That's that's my personality. Okay. Now that says that explains a lot, which is interesting. I'm a five. <laughs> I'm the investigator, which is. Oh, you are. Okay. Yeah, which is nice. really funny. Really funny. Yes. All right. We're talking to Paula Ferris. Uh, we're not talking about me. This is her book called out. Uh, and it's been out a little bit, but. You yep. reissued it. Why'd you circle back around instead of writing a new book during COVID? Um, well, I A, we didn't release the paperback. Usually you release the hardcover and the paperback right. at right. the same time. We just released the hardcover and you know, releasing a book in April 2020. Yeah, terrible. It, it had its own challenges. <laughs> um, what you know, COVID was just literally consuming the entire globe. Distribution channels were shut down. Mm -hmm. So we said, you know, we'll wait to release the paperback. A, a, a year or so. Um, but I kept getting feedback, Randy, from people who said, I want a companion, a companion guide because the book is part memoir, but it's also very action items oriented. And so what I did with the paperback is um, this is the, this is the paperback, but it has this little emblem and it says includes a free six week discussion guide. So that is essentially the companion guide. I just put it in the paperback. So every two chapters, there's a discussion guide and it takes you through the book in six weeks. So you just buy the paperback, you have it. And then I also wanted to host a book club. So I'm hosting a called out book club yep. on Instagram, September 1 through October 6. It's free to join. Just grab a pack. As long as you got the paperback, you got the discussion guide. I'll be going through it. Um, with everyone. I look, I'm right in the thick of it too. I, this isn't a book that I write because I figured everything out. It's like, I'm still struggling with a lot of this stuff. Um, but I do feel like I want to share this message and encourage other people, um, through the struggle mm -hmm. and the strength. Yeah. So, but anyway, that's really essentially the paperbacks is it's been freshened up a little bit. There's an epilogue about why I left ABC mm -hmm. news and, um, in New York. It's just, it's a freshened up version. Yeah. And, but I'm so excited about the discussion guide because it allows individuals or groups to take it a step further. Um, so book clubs can do this now and all they need is one book. You know, usually if you do a book club or a Bible study, you have to get the book and then the study guide and this and that. Everything's in the paperback. Right. So, but I am working on other books. Um, <laughs> I have a couple of other messages, okay. but you know, I, I also, feel like God has really called me to um, be with my kids, you yeah. know, and that's a really important season of vocational calling. I'm like, you know, I, I could get a jo another job in television. One of my friends said, had told me when I said I was going to move down here, she said, you can't just disappear into the ether. You've built up a great news career. And I said, A, I'm not disappearing into the ether, but B, why not? Like, mm -hmm. I, I feel like there's just this, just this expectation that we have to keep going we have to keep ch um, charging hard and that if we offer it we can't get back in and i just think that's a load of crock it um, is. it's a load of crock it really yeah. is yeah it, it is and and I, I did hear that there's a small town in south carolina that needs a weekend weather person uh so just oh uh, i'll send I, that you well right. okay the the the, the first <laughs> warning sign right there is i can never remember on a map east from west you know that you know the acronym never eat shredded wheat or no. never eat soggy waffles northeast southwest that's how you i have to every time i look at a map i'm like never eat shredded <laughs> okay that's west so i'm automatically going to remove myself from that hat well and you know you know from television <laughs> that those those green screens can be reversed <laughs> uh, the green screen you know what like my my i have a dear friend ginger z he was the first female chief meteorologist at abc and she i, I don't want to diminish what she does she is not a weather girl she is a scientist she has a degree in um she is a legit 
she had a bachelor of science. She's a scientist. She's a math math degree, Spanish degree. I mean, meteorologist, if you have your meteorology degree, you are a brainiac and she's a brainiac. Mm -hmm. And that's, and I just don't really love science. So. Okay. I have strengths. I have strengths. That's not one of them. (laughs) One thing you, you are doing, and I want, I want to point this out because this is on the website. Uh, You have a podcast. I do. I launched it. um, I had a podcast at ABC, which I really loved called Journeys of Faith. This is not that. Okay. So don't worry. That's an old podcast. Don't listen to that one. This one I launched recently in February where um, by the time this airs close to 28, 30 episodes in, and I'm interviewing people about what they're called to do, who they're called to be. And it's really casual and fun. It feels like you're just sitting in with friends. Um, I'm talking to old friends, new friends. I might be talking to my mom who's 81 about what God is calling her to do, or my 13 year old daughter, talking to my husband, talking to Michael Strahan, talking to Savannah Guthrie, talking to Lauren Daigle. So it's like, it's a nice mix of old and new friends and people who are really just um, doing life and it's very inspirational, but I say there are the three E's. It's got to be encouraging, it's got to be empowering, and it's got to be entertaining. Um, I was just looking at, I don't read all the reviews, but I read this today, and I'm like, okay, this is awesome, God. This this woman reviewed, she said, it's by far the most real podcast I've ever heard. That's what I wanted to feel. I wanted to feel real. We're having real conversations. Um, I don't sugarcoat things. My guests don't sugarcoat things. We talk, We go in, but we have a lot of fun. Uh, and that's available at uh, paulaferrisofficial.com. Yes, those, and I forgot those. to say it's the Paula Ferris Faith and Calling podcast. Faith, Faith and, and Calling. calling. I, right. Yeah, I buried the lead there. That was it. So uh, It's okay. You're a little rusty. You know, you've been out, <laughs> out for a couple of years. <laughs> I shake the rust off a little bit. Yeah, I'm just down here in my basement. So <laughs> <laughs> what do you what do you hope to what do you hope to see here in the, in the future? I mean, some big changes for you. Uh, still yeah. the same message that, that God worked through Absolutely. your life, but, uh, not all your questions are answered. You know, that, uh, God's word is a, a light right. into your, uh, a lamp into your feet and a light feet into your light path. My path, but that's about two steps for the way I've been lamp, you know, yes. in the dark. Yes. That's not that far. What do you, no. what do you think? It's like Martin Luther King said, faith is taking the first step when you can't see the rest of the staircase. Yeah. Look, I'm just... My whole goal, I feel like my faith calling is just to love God and love people wherever I'm placed. And I'm going to use those gifts of curiosity and question asking wherever I'm placed. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm really passionate about this message that God gave me to um, really empower people to find who they're called to be, what they're called to do, to, to resist that societal pressure that they have to do one thing for the rest of their life and that they have to get their value from that. And look, I just because of that, like, I just, I just want God to use me, but I also want to um, be intentional about the life that I'm creating for my kids and with my husband. And that's my priority. And it wasn't for a long time. My career was my priority. Um, But I'm just here to encourage people to champion people and to be used by God. Are you getting to spend uh, just a lot more time with your kids now? Yes, which is great. And Sometimes not so great. <laughs> My husband and I were joking. We're like, we are such better parents when our kids are in school because uh, it's summertime right now. They'll go back to school. Um, they'll probably be back at school by the time this airs mid to mid August. So, but they're doing really great. And we're just, again, look, God allows tragedy. Sometimes he allows pain in your path. I, again, I didn't choose to leave ABC when I did. I chose to pump the brakes when I did, but I didn't choose to leave ABC in 2020. And that was really hard. That was a, it was a hard pill to swallow. Um, Not just for my ego, but I, I I was, I I couldn't figure it out, but just in hindsight, just to see how God has protected our family, um, how he put us on the path that we needed to be on, not the one we wanted. God just takes care of you, but you just got to step out in faith and obey. Have you gotten to the the point, because I mean, you're, we're in TV. We measure things by the size of the audience. Right. But in life, it really is. It's not trite to say it's an audience of one, and that one is God that we please. Totally. Have you have you found? And I look, and I get it. I I, I get it. it. It's not. It's it just doesn't come automatically. It's, it's it's easier said than done. But have you found the joy and peace and contentment and satisfaction 100%. in, in satisfying 100%. that audience of one? Totally. Um, I wasn't always trying to chase that audience of one, but um, yeah, I'm totally, I'm just 
I feel a lot of peace right now. That doesn't mean that there's not uncertainty. That doesn't mean that there's not fear and risk involved, but I'm just at peace. You know, in this world, you'll have troubles, but take heart. I've overcome the world. And I've just really, that was something that spoke to me a lot during the pandemic. We're going to have troubles. We're going to have issues. It's not a pain-free life, but I'm just at peace knowing that God's got that final move on the chessboard. And um, I'm here. I'm here to shine a light. That's truly, I'm not here to be a broadcaster. I'm here to shine a light. Yeah. The way I might do that is through a podcast or through a company or through my kids. Um, but that's why I'm here to love God and love people. Shine did, my light. Did, did, did it ever occur to you that, that when God called you to do what he wants you to do, to shine the light, right? That he to, totally took into account all your faults and failures and missteps. And he's okay with that. A hundred percent. Um, I think your faults and failures um, help you find success. Michael Jordan says the key to success is failure. We're so scared to take risks. Um, and it's it's amazing to see how God has redeemed those failures. And I've learned more through my failures and through my flaws than I have through the quote unquote successes. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I just love that God can redeem any situation. Mm -hmm. He really can. And he will. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so true. And that's so, you know, it's so great to hear from you. And to hear Thank you. that testimony from you, because it is, it's counter to what we're trained to do a lot of times. And sometimes even when we're called to businesses where you have to measure by numbers and by success and, and things like that, and people are, I get it, right? You have to keep what you're talking about in mind at all times in order to really stay rooted. So thank you. Anything else, anything yeah. that I didn't mention that you want to mention? No, I just think like, you know, there are certain you just mentioned it industries that you, there's a barometer of success, whether it's ratings or it's mm -hmm. income. And I think if you're truly pleasing that audience of one, if you're truly shining your light and you're here to love God and love people and let God shine through you and work hard, but, you know, asking yourself, am I compromising values with my choices? It all works out. It really does. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have found that in this new season where I have had a paradigm shift and I know who I am outside of the doing, it's like, it makes me better in every capacity. Um, mm -hmm. more productive, mm -hmm. um, the world might say more successful, but I'm not worried about those things. Um, yeah. I'm focused on the right things yeah. and God takes care of it. Yeah. What a great so. word. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's so true. Thank you. Thanks for reinforcing that for those who know it, but need to hear oh, it again. And, yeah. And, and the last thing I want to say is, mm -hmm. Join the book club, get your yep. paperback and join the book club. It's free September 1st to October 6th. I'm going to be my, I've got friends and guests lined up. Everyone's invited to join on Instagram. So um, you can check out, I'll be disseminating information on my Instagram account too, but okay. I'm really excited to help encourage people through that. Do you know your handle? Is it Paula Ferris or Paula Ferris official on Instagram? Paula Ferris is, yeah, P-A-U-L-A, -A, F like Frank. A R I S like Sam, because most people spell it F A R R I S or F E R. It's one R, just like Paris with an F. So Paris, follow right. me on Insta. All right, so mm -hmm. we can follow you there. Check that or out. Or Facebook. Think I'll have the. I'll have it on Facebook. Facebook I'll have it on Facebook too. Just mm -hmm. follow. Her. Just follow her everywhere. <laughs> go out and just click. Just click through. Yes, 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 yes. All right. Because you never know, you know, we can get kicked off one or the other at any time. Okay. You Thanks. never know. All right. I know. Right. Yeah, I know. Yeah. All right, Randy. Thank hey, you. God bless. Thank you. I appreciate, appreciate it. You. And appreciate all you guys watching, hanging out. Um, yeah. Be sure to, to check out the website. The book is available right now. Um, so you can go check that out. The called out paperback is available. Paperback. 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 The paperback. And the website. So join the book yep. club. It's coming up fast. Join the book club. Yes, that's right, Randy. And... I'll be looking for you to join too. <laughs> uh, I'll call yes. you out if you don't join. I don't have time to read. Nobody. Anyway. <laughs> Appreciate you guys. We'll see you next time you're on Life Today Live. <laughs> see ya. Yeah. Thank you, Randy. Thank you, Paula.